You get what I'm yeah. coming from? You, you get yeah. what I'm coming from? So I want to make independence cool because I can't. It's like I can't make the basketball team. Man, I don't want to play for them niggas no way. Yeah. You get, yeah. What, you get yeah. what I'm coming from? Yeah. Or it came from somebody who, you know, didn't know enough, felt like they got taken advantage of, but they wasn't selling. Yeah. So they like, hey, you make more money independently anyway because they start seeing. But I don't, I don't hear Drake screaming, stay independent. I don't hear anybody that's I truly. I don't see anybody that's. I see people that have control or ownership of whatever it is that they have control or ownership with. But I see that even them partnering with other people or partnering right. with bigger, bigger labels or getting a distribution deal and partnering in that way. Right. I don't see people staying a hundred percent independent. No, because you not. It's like I said. There's no scale without collaboration. Yeah. Right. So I'm only gonna go, but so far I'm gonna break bread with somebody. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if I'm gonna break bread with somebody, it depends on what my goals is. If my goal is to be the top in the game, why would not I collaborate with the people who are the top of the game? Yeah. Why would I? Why like people took offense? I said in another interview, if I'm trying to be the the LeBron James of my sport, mm -hmm. why am I planning to be in the D League? Or play overseas ball. Yeah, that's true. Why would I would want to be in the NBA with all the best players to prove that I'm the best? Yeah, because it is a competition unless you're doing it as a hobby or unless you're doing it for fun. You feel where I'm coming from? Yeah, I agree. I think that in business, in any business that you start, especially for a market or a specific mm -hmm. demographic that's already mature, it's gonna be very. You're gonna have to pour a lot of money into it. You gotta understand these. If I take the NBA, for example, or the NFL, mm -hmm. right, they have been building this and pouring money into it. And for mm -hmm. the first 10, 20 years of them being in existence, they didn't make no money. Right. And it took them a long time to be able to bring up that brand. Facts. And somebody just starting an independent league, first of all, the NBA is going to look at you as competition. Like I like they should. Like, like they ice, should. Ice Cube. Yep, like the big three. Yeah. And then you're going to have to build up that. You're going to have to build that up over a period of time in order yeah. to compete. And I look at the same thing as far as the music industry. Mm -hmm. I don't think that most artists have the work ethic to even label themselves as independent. I, I think, think that that is very difficult. And that's true. And I think in anything in life is something called growing pains to get to that next yeah, level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure in real estate, you know, like, you, yeah, you got to go. You got to learn it. You got to you got. So. You know, I teach this million and 90 day master class, right? Yeah, and yeah. I teach this class because I wanted to teach artists how to get funds to invest into their craft the same way I did. Yeah. You feel me? Um, but I start off by saying the problem with most of us is that we're losers, right? Based off the definition of a loser is somebody who can't afford to take a loss. Okay. That's a loser. Yeah, I got you. So you find out how to win through experimentation. You get where I'm coming from? That's mm -hmm. how you find out how to win. I have to be able to try enough things, right, to see what works and what doesn't, mm -hmm. right? And so the problem is, is we, we, have, we're, we have lack. We don't have enough, mm -hmm. right? So we, can't, we don't, it's like, okay, cool. If, if all I got is $1,000 and it costs $1,000, you know what I'm saying, to get on this platform and it don't blow me up, it didn't work. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So now, because that didn't work, but it worked for me. It didn't work for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe this wasn't the platform. Yeah. Now it's a scam or now I got negative energy or maybe you should stay independent because that didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's a lot of reflecting and projecting and all that other stuff that's yeah. going on in music. And I know I'm speaking a, a little like deep because I could keep it ground level. But no, it, I like it like this. But it, it's, it's deeper than that, man. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of people that just don't have the knowledge and the information because the majority of the music industry for so long is just uh, taking advantage of the lack of knowledge yeah. of artists. Yeah. And I'm going to give it that, you know, but that's when we start understanding. And now we understand because to me, two plus two equal four. Right. Mm -hmm. So the problem I have is where in cases like mine, I spent 800,000 on an artist. I spent 600,000. It's a lot of money. Right. But I'm independent. But, that's a lot of but, money. Right. That's but, your own money, though. Right. Well, technically it's not, but we're going to say that. But, I mean, it's, it's your choice as to whether or not you want to spend it on that particular exactly. Artist, right? Exactly. Right, right, right. I'm saying technically it's not. No, 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 I got what you're back. saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is, you're right. It is my choice, right? So the thing is, is they're looking, I'm spending that amount of money on an artist, and they will slander me. Mm. So it makes it, it's like, dang, I'm trying to help you win. And you trying to make me lose. Yeah. 
So it makes it real unfun to do because of the mental yeah. and the mindset. But what it is, is it's all social media's facade because I'm trying to look like something that I'm not. That's why you hear people say, ain't no cap in my rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get like yeah. all this stuff is like, hey, I'm trying to look like somebody I'm not. But mm -hmm. then you got people who really do that. And then they say, well, you not who you say you are because the game is based on in that hip hop community is based off of perception. Mm -hmm. You feel Do me? you think that executives get a bad rap? Because they don't necessarily get to tell their side of the, that, that side of the coin as far as the fact that, or maybe not even executives, like owners or whoever it is that promote No, nah, I agree people. with you. I feel like some of them take a bad rap, and I think in the game, sometimes in the game, the game is a dirty game. Like, the thing about it is a majority of execs, right, that started out, right, it's the music business and the hip, we talking about the hip hop culture, because mm -hmm. I can't speak on the other cultures, right? It's a dirty game because most of it comes from drug money. Mm. Think about it. Like, I can't afford to spend two, three hundred thousand dollars as a working citizen, black person going to college. So to get them juries and diamonds, I had to do a lot of wicked things. Yeah. So guess what? My mentality is wicked. So it breeds more wickedness. Yeah. So now we're promoting wickedness. And now we're having all these conversations of how the culture, oh, everybody's violent, degrading women. Mm -hmm. This that's the culture. Yeah. That's the culture. The foundation of you it can't was have it both ways. Yeah. You feel where I'm coming from? So either we gonna consciously clean it up, but it gotta start with the educational part, right? I don't know if it can be. Yeah, anything is possible. I don't know, boom. I don't know, man. Man, listen, with this, with the internet, it's so many people learning so much stuff. Everything is it, is waves and movements. Like we had at one point in time, Atlanta got big, right? Because the energy was fun. Yeah. And it, yeah, it, it, it did. You're right. But it was gangster before it was fun. It was. You get where I'm coming from? Yeah, so it was gangster rap. You know what I'm saying? Like the hardcore uh, Easy E and, yeah. you know, the, the Suge Knights. And it was then it was too much violence. And then it became, it's like we tired of it. Yeah. So now it went to lean with it, rock with it, and mm -hmm. do it, do it, and dance. And, oh, they killed hip hop because we made it fun. Yeah. You feel me? It became more party. Yep. It became more about the elements of having a good time. And then it, you know, it evolved back into something else because mm -hmm. you feel me. So I, I mean, even when it's even when it come to like, you know, the biggest artist in the game, Drake, right? Mm -hmm. And we look at it, I don't know really how people could really hate Drake. Yeah, like in that the music that he makes is is the thing that people say that they want that's not necessarily toxic, mm -hmm. right? And that, for example, if you, if I could be riding down the street. And let's just, you know, take the certain side of it. Like, he, he came out with an album, I think it was called uh, Honestly Nevermind or whatever. And it was just, like, all vibe music. Mm -hmm. I put it on with my girl, and mm -hmm. she was just happy about it, and we was just kind of chilling or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then he got killed for it. 